Hey guys, um, today I am going to show you some of my tried and true Bible study tools and how I use them, how I personally integrate them into my quiet time, my Bible studies when I'm doing further research on things like for my uh, blog and stuff. <clears throat> But these are just sort of kind of my personal ways of doing things, um, things that I will recommend. And I will leave some other things in the description box, other things like online tools and uh, links where you can get these things if you would like. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll just kind of get started here. Um, the first thing that I wanted to show you, I mean, you can't have a Bible study without a Bible. I mean, it's just that simple obviously but I've got three main ones here I'm a girl Nora Conrad you've probably heard of her she is a productivity coach on YouTube and she also does excellent Bible studies um, I've really been into her a lot lately but <clears throat> one of her tips is to not read just one translation now there's a lot of people out there that say well this one transla translation is the only one you need but <clears throat> especially with me personally I have to really understand it uh, just one translation isn't going to do it for me because I have to have um, I have to have other perspectives if you will I have to have uh, the modern language like the main one that I go to is the King James uh, and we know that that was more of a Shakespearean language and not everybody speaks that today. You may run into uh, parts of the country where the Amish live and the Mennonites where they still speak the language that King James would have spoken. But and I'm really sorry about my hair, it's driving me nuts. Anyways, uh, I have three translations here that I like that I personally like to go to. Now I've got tons of other translations in the house, but these are the three main ones that I have personally in my bedroom. And this one is my King James Women's Study Bible. This one right here, it is absolutely gorgeous. It's, uh, I believe it's leather bound. I'm sure it is. Uh, but this Bible is absolutely amazing. It has articles, it's got word studies, it's got the, the footnotes underneath underneath your uh, verses here, uh, quotes by different women, um, d d maps at the back, d anything and everything you could possibly need to study the Word of God. <clears throat> And that is my King James. Now I do have a King James that is just mainly for reading. I mean, it's, it is ginormous. And it belonged to my grandmother. <laughs> but this is my main, main one that I read for my personal purposes. Personal purposes. I like that. <laughs> the next one is my Experiencing the Word New Testament. This is one that I read when I'm reading something from the New Testament. Um, this one is uh, the Holman Christian Standard Bible, Bible, and it's got notes from an author called Henry Blackby, and he wrote the book Experiencing God. I've got it over here, and he's got notes in here and word studies from that book, and it corresponds with verses or studies. Um, this particular one has Greek word studies, like you can look at the Greek word, what it looks like. Um, and then you can use it to get, go to the particular verse where the Greek word is mentioned and it'll show you how to pronounce it, what it means, other places where it's found, things like that. And the last one is the one that I grew up with. And it is the NIV, the New International Version. Um, and it's pretty standard, really. It's got reference uh, points 
in here. Um, very, very, very small print, so I have to have my reading glasses when I read it. But the reference verse is right there in the middle. Sometimes I'll have footnotes underneath. Uh, I have actually just started using it again after quite a few years. I've been really into the King James, but uh, yeah, those are the three Bibles that I use. Um, like I said, it's good to have more than one translation so that you can kind of get the gist of what's going on. Um, like with the King James, sometimes you can get mixed up and you get confused. Like it, it looks like it's changing to the n another subject when it's not, and then you go to the next verse and it's like, oh, there's the first subject again. Wait a minute, how does this tie in? So you've got to have other translations to kind of help you kind of get a gist of what's going on. And the next kind of goes along with Bibles, uh, but sometimes you need things to write write your notes in, write what you learned. It's good to mark your Bible, but there is a Bible out there that is made for marking up, made for destroying, if you will. It's made for just writing down what God tells you, things that you've been inspired by. Um, this is my King James, I'm sorry, this is my King James journaling Bible. It was given to me by a friend. Uh, she had asked me one day, do, do you still read King James? I was like, yeah. Well, I've got a journal and Bible I'm trying to get rid of. And I said, so yeah, bring it on over. So I have been using this. A journaling Bible isn't necessarily just, you've probably seen them out there where they've got the pictures in it and you color them in and make it look really pretty. And I've personally done that in here. I have gone to, let's see, find Genesis here. I have gone into Genesis. <coughs> let's go to Genesis. <coughs> Sorry, these allergies. I've gone in here and I've drawn, like, the creation. I've got trees here and I've got the water and the earth and whatnot. I mean, that's just some of the things you can do with with a journaling Bible. Um, and I've drawn the rainbow over the story of Noah and the rainbow here. Uh, and then the main thing that a journaling Bible is for um, where is Ruth going the wrong way? Um, I'm sorry, y'all. Here we go. Take notes and you highlight and you pray. and you. This is actually part of a study in the book of Ruth that I did with Nora Conrad. And uh, it's it was really amazing. If you are interested in that, go see her. It's an incredible study. Um, and this woman has no idea who I am. I'm not sponsoring her. She's not sponsoring me. Um, but anyways, I've, she's probably seen me comment on her videos a lot, and that's the only way she would know I exist, so no hate there. <clears throat> but anyways, I know I'm scatterbrained. Another way to write things down, now, before I go into this, like I said, journaling Bible is just there to journal your thoughts and to record what God is telling you to be creative with it. You don't have to just write notes. You can draw pictures. You can uh, write your prayers in there. Uh, write answered prayers next to your favorite verse that had to do with that prayer. Um, and it's really great for when you have a Bible like say my NIV for instance. It doesn't really have a whole lot of writing room in here and the pages are super thin so I can't really highlight but journaling Bibles are actually made for things like that so check it out if you're interested. 
<clears throat> but next thing is a journal. I mean, just a standard journal. I bought this at the Christian bookstore. I think it was on sale for like six dollars. It's got the serenity, serenity prayer. I've written my prayers in here. I've written studies in here. I've written anything that can be written in here. I need to get a new one very soon. Um, but yeah, a journal is great, uh, especially if there's things. There are things that you want to record. And again, if you don't have enough room in your Bible or if it's not made to be written in, a journal is great. These small ones are great to carry to church. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, moving on. And some of my favorite tools to use, obviously, a pen and a pencil. Um, pencil is great because if you make a mistake, you can just erase it and go over it. A pen, however, it kind of, it, it makes it look more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not really, it doesn't make it look more professional because there's not really, there's no such thing as being professional with Bible study if you catch my drift, but it <clears throat> makes it look more neat, makes it look more put together. And the last thing here, I've got some erasable, twistables, uh, colored pencils. <clears throat> and they look like this. They've got erasers down there at the end. These are incredible. These are great for highlighting. You don't need to go out and get an expensive kit. I think those were like $3 at Walmart several years ago. I'm sure they've still got them. But those are the things that I highlight and write with. <clears throat> And then, my gigantic Bible planner. Um, I made a cover for it on a notebook paper, and I just wrote my name and Bible study planner and whatnot. Pardon me. I know, I'm scatterbrained. <laughs> I don't really know how to do these videos. <clears throat> but in here, I've got, let's see if I can turn this around without letting everything fall apart. I've got what is included in my Bible study planner. I've got like a list. It's almost like a table of contents. Um, <clears throat> uh, things to remember about Bible study. My prayer list. Uh, I've got another reading plan over here for the book of Isaiah. And then I've got another section here for my study notes. back when I did a study in the book of Titus. I'm still working on that. That's what Titus looks like right now. And I'm also in the middle of doing a study in the book of First Peter. I'm hoping to actually do a video on that. <clears throat> in this study of First Peter. And then I've got quotes and memory verses and uh, websites that I need to remember. You know, things like that. In this planner, I also made a color code system. And this one was actually made specifically for this Bible right here. The Experience in the Word, the Home and Christian. <clears throat> and the color code system is really helping you keep, keep your records organized and keeping your thoughts organized <clears throat> so that what you want to look for is there it's it's in the color you want uh, let me just show you here over here are the colors let's see if I can over here are the colors and then over here what the colors stand for when I'm highlighting <clears throat> Like purple would be prophecy and in end times. Orange is prayer, God's will, anything pertaining to God's will. Uh, yellow is your general and your promises. Red would be your salvation, your evangelism. And then down here, the marking system. I've got if if I'm putting a cross next to a verse, 
it points to the cross or points backwards to the cross what Jesus did a cloud would be something very important to remember something important that I would need to look back to when I'm studying S would stand for see the references notes word studies and you can find ideas for your marking systems your color code systems on Pinterest that's actually where I find, found mine and I just kind of customized it to what I needed but <clears throat> I've got two more things here that I would like to recommend and again the wow this video is not sponsored by anybody. I am not sponsoring anybody. Uh, this is just me filming a video on a very boring day and I just wanted to share with you some of my tips and tools and tricks. But first, first book here that I wanted to show you is Know Your Bible. All 66 books explained and applied. And it's just a very tiny little Bible, or very tiny little book. It's 99 cents. I'm sure you can find it online somewhere. Um, what it is, it's got all of the books of the Bible. And it tells you uh, who the author is, it, what the date could have been when it was written. A summary of it in 10 words or less. Details. Uh, famous quotes in the particular book. Um, it's really nice. It's really very nicely put together. Very creative. And it's extremely easy to use when I'm looking for something specific. That another book or something online wouldn't be able to tell me. I can usually go to this and it'll tell me. And then the very last thing here is how to study the Bible. Um, let's see if this has an author. It does not have an author but it's by the brand Barber Publishing. So if you are interested that is Know Your Bible. <clears throat> and this one is How to Study the Bible. Also another thing, another book, 99 cents. Um, this also doesn't really have a particular author. It, actually, it does. Uh, Robert M. West. This is the author here. And it's got loads of information on different ways you can study the Bible. Um, it tells you about the inductive method. It tells you about um, how to really get in there and figure out what it actually means. Uh, different tools again it'll, it'll give you in detail di different tools that you can use um, but again this is how to study the Bible by Robert M. West <clears throat> I believe that is everything here that I've got laid out if you've got any good uh, tips or tools that you would like for me to know about something that you personally use share it down in the comments Again, I can have everything listed down below, uh, so that way you know what I've been using, and if you are interested, you can get it too. And thank you for putting up with my rambling and my playing with my very uncooperative hair today. <clears throat> but anyways, thank you for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.